Hello friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebird's Frightful Little Bits and the Pathway Background. So I've stamped my images on two separate panels of Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. We're going to start with this big background and I'm so excited to dive into this one. So I've just stuck a piece of scratch cardstock behind the panel so that I can color all the way to the edge and not get any of that Copic marker on my desktop. So I'm starting with my sky and I'm going to use V20, V22, V25, and V28. I thought it would be fun to do a purple night sky. So I'm starting by taking that V20 and sketching in a moon so that I leave that space white. And then I'm going to begin to color all around that using that same marker. So um, normally if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I do typically color darkest to lightest. Now the exception would be when you're doing large images like this. Um, then I often do lightest to darkest because that just helps to saturate that paper and get it ready for blending. So I'm just going to take that color um, quite a bit of the ways out and uh, even run it off the side on the right there. And even though that's going to get covered up with some other colors later in certain areas, um, like I said, it's just saturating that paper and getting it ready for blending. Then I'm coming in with the V22, which is my next shade, and I'm going to pull that in from either side and from the tree and above those bushes, just kind of um, carefully adding that color around there. It is going to get a little bit on some of those images. Some of it will get covered up by darker colors. Others I will push back with the colorless blender, but... Um, I'm just trying to be as careful as I can be since that purple is going to end up getting fairly dark. So now I'm using the V25 and I'm bringing that color in even more, I'm trying to stick in kind of a circular motion to kind of uh, come out from that moon. I want there to be a little bit of a glow around that moon and um, then get darker and darker as we move away from it. I'm also going to start to fill in the area on the opposite side of the tree because I figured that the the light of the moon wouldn't be casting that far. And always going back with the previous colors and blending out the edges to create a nice smooth transition. Um, and then I'm going to bring in my darkest shade, that V28, which is quite a bit darker, has a lot more gray to it. Um, it's almost even a little bit of blue in there. So that's going to add a lot of depth to my scene, which it really needs because that depth is going to make that area around the moon look even lighter. So I'm going to fill in the area at the bottom of the sky with that V28 and then go back and blend in the reverse with all of those shades. So today's video is definitely extremely Copic heavy. Um, almost the entire video is Copic coloring. So if you love Copic coloring as much as I do, you're probably gonna be really excited. Um, you should probably grab some coffee or something or whatever your drink of choice is and settle in because it's gonna be a long one. Um, and if coloring is not your thing, um, this pun probably is one you're going to want to skip because it's pretty much the entire video. Um, so anyway, I'm just going back now with my lighter shades, working my way back up across the scene and um, creating that nice blend like I mentioned. I don't mind a little bit of streakiness because it kind of adds the effect of the sky, but I want it to be intentional and not just because the blending wasn't very good. By the way, if you would like to see this um, pathway background stamp colored in a daytime scene, I do have a video um, on that on my channel. Um, I can link that in the cards right above. And that one has it in the um, landscape orientation. So that's kind of why I decided to do the portrait orientation today and just kind of mix it up a bit. 
All right, so I'm happy with my sky and I'm going to move on to my tree. And for that, I'm using E43, E44, E47, and E49. That E49 is going to be my darkest marker. I'm going to add a little shadow on the outer edge of that over on the left to just create that look of roundness. And then I'm also going to outline all of the lines that the artist has drawn to give it some texture and just rough up that tree bark a bit. So that's gonna give me um, a lot of depth too. I just love the way uh, that she has drawn this image and just given you so many little areas to add little nooks and crannies of dark and light color. I also outlined the underside of that branch that is extending out to help that have that round appearance. And I did put a little bit of darkness on the right side of the tree, but because of that moon glow, I didn't wanna to get too dark, so I did leave some lighter spaces. Now I'm coming in with that E47, and I'm going to blend out the E49, just pretty much tracing over the edges of wherever I laid down that E49, and also um, adding a bit of shadow down to the base of the tree trunk. And any of the lines that I left um, unfilled in from the artist, I will add now with that E47. Um, so maybe a few of them won't be quite as dark, but they'll still have some depth because they will be darker in contrast to the lighter two colors. Now I'm coming in with that E44 and I'm going to just start to blend out. Um, now I'm being a little less careful with where that color is going and just kind of leaving a few spaces here and there. There's not really any rhyme or reason to it. I'm just kind of... Um, leaving a few places that are gonna be able to fill in with that highlighted shade and um, to create that more dramatic effect so that the coloring isn't you know, flat or anything like that. So now that I have those highlighted areas left, I'm gonna fill those in with the E43 and just kind of smooth everything over, although I don't want it to be too smooth. Like I mentioned, this is kind of a rough textured bark and I wanna keep the integrity of the way that that is drawn. So if it's not like a perfect blend, this is the one time where I really don't mind that. In fact, I'm gonna leave it a little bit imperfect. So for the tree leaves, I'm going to use YR20, YR21, YR23, YR24, and YR27. And I know that's a lot of marker shades, but I wanted to have a lot of variety while still keeping in this color tone for the leaves. So I'm starting with that YR20 and just filling in to give it a base, just, you know, so everything is saturated. And then there's also like a background color and then I'm going to start to dot in with the next shade, which is the YR21. And I'm sticking mainly to the edges of each of the little clusters that are drawn there. And uh, this is going to be uh, modeled after a tree that is in my backyard. I have a big silver maple right in the center of my backyard. And it's got these really beautiful kind of goldeny yellow russet type colored leaves. And uh, it's just something that I look at every day. It's outside my craft room window, outside of the deck and the sliding glass door. <laughs> um, no matter where you are in the house, if you're facing the backyard, that's what you see. And so I thought I would color this tree to look like my tree. So I continued adding those dots with the YR23, and now I'm adding them with the YR24, still sticking close to that edge and just building up that color tone with those markers. And um, it's just gonna give it the appearance of some leaves and also the spaces in between the dots are just gonna look like you know dappled light that's kind of shining through. So now I'm going in with the YR27, which is my darkest shade. And this is where it's going to start to um, take on that really beautiful fall leaf tone. 
So now it's got that richness and depth in there. Um, and once I have that YR27 laid in, I'm not done. I'm going to work my way back down in the reverse through all of the other marker shades and I'll creep just a little bit more and more into that lighter space. I still want to leave a little bit of that plain, but um, I'm going to take over most of it with the other marker shades. So that's the thing about coloring backgrounds. I haven't been doing them for very long. They do take a lot of time. The uh, raw footage for this video was over an hour long, and that was with me um, stopping many times. <laughs> my battery, I have two different batteries for my camera. They both ran out and um, I had to use the first one again and it was not fully charged. So I was just hoping that it would last for the video, which it did. Um, but yeah, they take some time, but to, if you really love coloring with Copics, like it is just such a joy. I was listening to an audiobook and I was having the time of my life, honestly. Um, so now I'm moving on to the bushes and I wanted to do those in a red tone. There's a lot of red colored bushes around where I live and I'm not great with um, plant names, so I'm not sure exactly what they are, but they're absolutely gorgeous and I wanted to have those on my cards. So I'm using R32, R35, and R39. I will add some additional colors later and I'm doing it just in the same way that I did the tree, just with different marker shades. So I started with that R32 and colored in the entire area to saturate it. And now I dotted the R35 along the top edge. So it's basically kind of flipped from the tree. I'm just doing the very edge, but in this case it's facing, you know, up. And then I'm going to come in with that R39 and darken that even further. And I kind of already knew when I picked these marker shades out that three colors wasn't going to be enough to create that depth that I was going for. But I decided to just start with these and then um, add in some additional colors after I saw how it was going so I could decide what kind of tones I wanted. And I wanted something that had a bit more of a gray tone into it. Um, so that's why I chose the R56. That one is... Um, just a lot more desaturated and so it's um, going to add just another kind of depth to it uh, that's different from the bright other colors and then that R46 is more of like a cherry red so that will add a bit of brightness to it so I'm just trying to choose colors that are going to create various hues and um, levels of saturation to just give me uh, the most depth that I can. So I worked my way all the way to the darkest color and now I'm working my way back down into the reverse and again just creeping into that lighter area the further down that I go. So I believe that the shrubs that I'm talking about are called a burning bush but I know that there's lots of different kinds that turn red in the fall so um, I just thought that would be a beautiful pop on the card there. And you could certainly color the little bush that comes in front of the tree to be part of the same shrub, but I just wanted to get as many different fall shades in there that I could, so I decided to make it a separate plant. So for this one, I'm going to use YG93, YG95, YG97, and YG99. So I first filled it in completely with that YG93 and now I'm coming along that top edge with the YG95. I also added just a few dots down toward the bottom left since that's kind of the edge of the card just to frame it up and give it that bit of darkness. So I added the YG97 and then the YG99 and now when I work back I'm actually going to skip over the YG97 just because it's a smaller area. I went straight to the YG95 and then the YG93. So next I wanted to tackle the grass and I didn't want it to be the same tone as that shrub. So I went with YG61, YG63, and YG67. These are also kind of a um, desaturated 
green combination so it's got that gray tone in it that's going to make it work really well for fall but it's not quite the olive green so it's going to match um, but just be uh, different. So I started with the YG61 and filled in both of those um, grassy areas and at first I tried to color around the rocks. I didn't bother with the grasses but um, I tried to go around the rocks but then I just realized it was going to be way too hard to do that. So I added in a few streaks of that YG63 to kind of add some rolling hills and then um, added a bit of YG67 to darken that up. And now I'm blending that YG67 back out with the YG63. And then I'm going to fill in everything with the YG61. And you can see I even ended up going over that flower. No big deal. I'll just use my colorless blender a little bit later and then color it with a darker combo of markers. And the same with the stones. I could go back in and push that color out with my colorless blender. I'm not going to. I'm just going to end up coloring them with dark enough shades that it covers up most of the green. And if a little bit is left over, it's not a big deal because they're stones anyway. They could have raw, uh, moss growing on them or, you know, they just maybe have a little bit of variation in shade in there. So I'm just blending out with that YG61, making sure everything is kind of smoothed out there. And then I'll go back to my olive tones for the grasses. I didn't want to introduce another whole green combo. I wanted to stay in that color palette, so I decided to just use those shades again and then they would be represented in another area on the card. That's something that I, I usually do like to do just to um, create a little bit of continuity. So I'm using the YG95, YG97, and YG99 and just quickly coloring in any of the grasses and leaves that are toward the bottom of the scene there and um, just creating like, like I said with the other area, it's kind of making a frame with those darker shades is just kind of um, almost like a vignette even though it's it's not really for this area but just having those darker colors on the outside edges just focuses your eye toward the center since that's where the highlighted areas are and so your eye just gravitates toward the light so it just kind of creates a little bit of a, a frame for your eye and so that's what I was trying to accomplish. I'm going over any of the little grasses with the YG95 but that made them a little bit too different from the uh, regular color of the grass so I am going to grab the YG93 and just kind of blend over the bottom edge of those grasses to kind of incorporate it just a little bit more into the rest of the greens. For the stones, I'm using C1, C3, and C5. So I'm starting with that C5 and adding a little bit of darkness toward the bottom of the stones and then in a few other little places as well. I just add a little squiggle um, just because stones don't always have, you know, the dark sh shadows just at the bottom. They also have, you know, other little striations and things like that. So then I use the C3 to blend that out and then the C1 and just like with the tree, I'm not trying to create a perfect blend. I want some of that variation in there. I used my colorless blender to kind of push some of that color out of the flower and then I'm going to let that dry while I work on the pathway. I'm using E40, E41, and E42 for that. So it's the same color family as the tree but just lighter shades. So it's going to um, just really create a nice cozy feel. Everything is going to be um, very cohesive. So I used the E42 on the outside edges and then blended toward the center of that path with the E41 and then filled in with the E40. 
and then I am going to go back with that E42 and add a bit more depth and then blend that out with the E41 and just leave the center part as it is. I'll go back and color the flower with R35 and R39 so it will cover up that green. And that finishes up our background. So now moving on to my focal images and I'm going to start with my little ghosts. Now, a lot of people have been coloring those to look transparent lately, and I love the look of it, but um, after all of the coloring that I did on the background, I wanted to keep the images just a little bit more simple, so I'm just going to color them as if they're white ghosts, and I'm going to add a little bit of that um, dark night sky glow on their backs. Um, it's just kind of like reflecting off of them. So I use the B60 first to add just a little stripe down their backs and a little color underneath their arms. And then I'm taking that B63 and using the very tip of that marker to add a tiny thin line because it is quite a bit darker. And then I'm going to blend that out with the B60 again. So keeping it really simple and uh, trying to keep the video as short as possible for you guys too because if I would have tried to do transparent ghosts, even though that would have been fun, this would have made the video so much longer. Um, so I added a bit of B63 under their arms as well and blended out with the B60 again. And then I'm moving on to my bat and to kind of echo the stones, I'm going to use some cool grays. I'm using C3, C5, and C9. I meant to grab the C7 and I didn't realize until I was already started that I had the C9 by accident. So I just decided to go with it. They aren't too different, so it still blends out pretty well with that C5. So I added a bit of shadow with that C9. I don't want to use too much of it because it is so dark, it's nearly black. And uh, kept that just really to the outside edges and then a few little places to kind of accentuate the different body parts and then blended that out with the C5. And I'm also going to create the center, um, is it a bone in their wing? But I think you guys know what I mean. Just creating that little center part of the wing with that C5 as well. And then I'm going to continue blending with the C3. And uh, I ended up deciding that I was going to need to add one more color in there. So I'm saving room for that um, just for a bit more of a highlight. I didn't want his face to get too dark. Plus I'm gonna end up putting him really close to the moon. So I wanted him to have that reflection of the moon on his face and on that side of his body. So I grabbed the C1 to finish him off and just blended that out. And I have to say, I do not like bats at all in real life, but these guys were so cute. I just had to use one of them on this card today. I'm also going to take that C1 and just add a tiny little detail to the edge of the sentiment. I wanted it to be a different color than the ghosts, so that's why I went with the C1. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of being really thin with that little line just to add some detail to it so it isn't just plain white. And I got a little bit out of the line that I was trying to create there. So I did grab my colorless blender and just kind of push that color back where I wanted it to go. For the pumpkins, I'm using YR12, YR14, and YR18. So I'm kind of outlining the various little sections with the YR18 and adding a bit of shadow down towards the uh, back left side there since he's facing towards the right so that that moonlight will kind of create a little bit of a glow on his face as well. And then blending out with the YR14, and then I'll take the YR12 to finish him off. I'll do the second pumpkin off screen, and then I'm gonna go back to my olive tones to color in the little stem. So I just use the YG97 for the back and then YG95 and YG93. 
And then for the leaves, I'm going back to some of the shades that I used on the tree so that they'll look like they're falling from that. So I picked YR23, YR24, and YR27. I started with the YR27 close to the stem, and then I'm getting lighter and lighter as I get towards the end of the leaf. That YR23 was a bit darker than I expected it to be, but I decided to just go with it and then added in the YR21 to just have a little bit more contrast and lighten that up. And then I wanted to add just a tiny little bit of color to that lollipop, so I grabbed the R43 and did kind of a pink and white swirl on there. I took my black Sakura jelly roll pen and went over the eyes of the um, bat and the ghost that has his eyes open. And then I trimmed these out with their coordinating dies. So our coloring is finally done. And if you guys are still with me, you are amazing rock stars. <laughs> and you must love Copic coloring as much as I do. My card base is Lawn Fawn's Fake Tan cardstock, and I'm stamping in Pumpkin Spice ink, and I did the little pumpkin stack, and the ghost holding the tiny pumpkin, and I put the sentiment that says, Hey Pumpkin. Um, I just love those guys, and they didn't fit on the front, so I decided to use them on the inside. And then I trimmed down my background with the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables to give it that nice stitching detail and to shave off just a sliver from the outside edge so that I could have this really bright pop of orange cardstock showing through on the edges because I just thought that would um, add something to the card. I'm going to add my two pumpkins to the scene with some liquid glue and I decided to add them flat to the card to kind of ground them into the scene. And then anything that is going to be floating above, like in the air, um, I'm going to add foam tape to the back of those. So I had to cover up some of my stones to put my other little pumpkin. And then next I'm going to add the bat and I wanted to have him just slightly overlapping the edge of that moon just to push it back even further into the scene so it looks, you know, like it's up there in the night sky. And then I've got the little ghost that's going to be holding the little trick-or-treat pumpkin basket. So I've got those two guys ready to go so that I can add them together, just tucking the edge of that handle under his hand. And then the um, sentiment is going to go right above him. So just went ahead and added that now. Then I've got my other little ghost and I wanted him to be over on the right hand side. So I'm just making sure that he's not directly in line with the pumpkin above. I wanted him to be a little bit offset. And then I've got my four leaves, so I'm just going to add those here and there to kind of um, bring that color down throughout the rest of the scene and make them look as though they are drifting down from that uh, treetop. So my last little leaf, I had intended to add that kind of tucked behind a pumpkin, but the colors were too similar, so I decided not to do that. So I hadn't added foam tape to the back of that one, and I decided to just go ahead and leave that one glued flat to the card just to create a little bit of extra dimension. So I have different things at different levels. And that was too close to this other leaf, so I decided to pull that up and move it a bit higher. And I considered adding a bit of stickles, but to be honest, I had spent so much time on the coloring, I didn't want to cover even a tiny bit of that up. So there's another peek at the inside and an up-close look at all of that detail. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had so much fun coloring it for you. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a happy Halloween if you celebrate. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you'd like to continue watching, here are two videos that I thought you might also enjoy.
If you're interested in any of the products that I use today, you'll find those listed and linked below the video. Thank you so much again for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.